We continue on today with chapter 12, The Attraction of Love for Love. Do you really believe that you can kill the Son of God? The Father has hidden His Son safely within Himself and kept Him far away from your destructive thoughts. But you know neither the Father nor the Son because of them. You attack the real world every day and every hour and every minute, and yet you are surprised that you cannot see it. If you seek love in order to attack it, you will never find it. For if love is sharing, how can you find it except through itself? Offer it and it will come to you, because it is drawn to itself. But offer attack and love will remain hidden for it can live only in peace. God's Son is as safe as His Father, for the Son knows His Father's protection and cannot fear. His Father's love holds Him in perfect peace, and needing nothing, He asks for nothing. Yet He is far from you whose self He is, for you chose to attack Him and he disappeared from your sight into his Father. He did not change, but you did, for a split mind and all its works were not created by the Father, and could not live in the knowledge of him. When you made visible what is not true, what is true became invisible to you. Yet it cannot be invisible in itself, for the Holy Spirit sees it with perfect clarity. It is invisible to you because you are looking at something else. Yet it is no more up to you to decide what is visible and what is invisible than it is up to you to decide what reality is. What can be seen is what the Holy Spirit sees. The definition of reality is God's, not yours. He created it, and He knows what it is. You, who knew, have forgotten, and unless He had given you a way to remember, you would have condemned yourself to oblivion. Because of your Father's love, you can never forget Him, for no one can forget what God Himself placed in His memory. You can deny it, but you cannot lose it. A voice will answer every question you ask, and a vision will correct the perception of everything you see. For what you have made invisible is only the truth, and what you have not heard is the only answer. God would reunite you with yourself, and did not abandon you in your distress. You are waiting only for Him, and do not know it. Yet his memory shines in your mind and cannot be obliterated. It is no more past than future, being forever, always. You have but to ask for this memory, and you will remember. Yet the memory of God cannot shine in a mind that has obliterated it and wants to keep it so. For the memory of God can dawn only in a mind that chooses to remember, and that has relinquished the insane desire to control reality. You who cannot even control yourself should hardly aspire to control the universe. But look upon what you have made of it, and rejoice that it is not so. Son of God, be not content with nothing. What is not real cannot be seen and has no value. God could not offer His Son what has no value, nor could His Son receive it. You were redeemed the instant you thought you had deserted Him. Everything you made has never been, and is invisible because the Holy Spirit does not see it. Yet what He does see is yours to behold and through His vision your perception is healed. 
You have made invisible the only truth that this world holds. Valuing nothing, you have sought nothing. By making nothing real to you, you have seen it, but it is not there. And Christ is invisible to you because of what you have made visible to yourself. Yet it does not matter how much distance you have tried to interpose between your awareness and truth. God's Son can be seen because His vision is shared. The Holy Spirit looks upon Him and sees nothing else in you. What is invisible to you is perfect in His sight and encompasses all of it. He has remembered you because He forgot not the Father. You looked upon the unreal and found despair, yet by seeking the unreal, what else could you find? The unreal world is a thing of despair, for it can never be, and you who share God's being with Him could never be content without reality. What God did not give you has no power over you, and the attraction of love for love remains irresistible. For it is the function of love to unite all things unto itself, and to hold all things together by extending its wholeness. The real world was given you by God in loving exchange for the world you made and the world you see. Only take it from the hand of Christ and look upon it. Its reality will make everything else invisible. For beholding it is total perception, and as you look upon it, you will remember that it was always so. Nothingness will become invisible, for you will at last have seen truly. Redeemed perception is easily translated into knowledge, for only perception is capable of error, and perception has never been. Being corrected, it gives place to knowledge, which is forever the only reality. The atonement is but you, your way back to what was never lost. Your father could not cease to love his son. And from the workbook, Lesson 93. Light and joy and peace abide in me. You think you are the home of evil, darkness, and sin. You think if anyone could see the truth about you, he would be repelled, recoiling from you as if from a poisonous snake. You think if what is true about you were revealed to you, you would be struck with horror so intense that you would rush to death by your own hand, living on after seeing this being impossible. These are beliefs so firmly fixed that it is difficult to help you see that they are based on nothing. That you have made mistakes is obvious. That you have sought salvation in strange ways, have been deceived, deceiving and afraid of foolish fantasies and savage dreams, and have bowed down to idols made of dust. All this is true by what you now believe. Today we question this, not from the point of view of what you think, but from a very different reference point, from which such idle thoughts are meaningless. These thoughts are not according to God's will. These weird beliefs He does not share with you, this is enough to prove that they are wrong, but you do not perceive that this is so. Why would you not be overjoyed to be assured that all the evil that you think you did was never done, that all your sins are nothing, that you are as pure and holy as you were created, and that light and joy and peace abide in you? Your image of yourself cannot withstand the will of God. You think that this is death, but it is life. You think you are destroyed, but you are saved. The self you made is not the Son of God. Therefore this self does not exist at all. 
and anything it seems to do and think means nothing. It is neither bad nor good, it is unreal, and nothing more than that. It does not battle with the Son of God, it does not hurt him nor attack his peace. It has not changed creation nor reduced eternal sinlessness to sin and love to hate. What power can this self you made possess when it would contradict the will of God? Your sinlessness is guaranteed by God. Over and over this must be repeated until it is accepted. It is true. Your sinlessness is guaranteed by God. Nothing can touch it or change what God created as eternal. The self you made, evil and full of sin, is meaningless. Your sinlessness is guaranteed by God and light and joy and peace abide in you. Salvation requires the acceptance of but one thought. You are as God created you, not what you made of yourself. Whatever evil you may think you did, you are as God created you. Whatever mistakes you made, the truth about you is unchanged. Creation is eternal and unalterable. Your sinlessness is guaranteed by God. You are and will forever be exactly as you were created. Light and joy and peace abide in you because God put them there. In our longer exercise periods today, which would be most profitable if done for the first five minutes of every waking hour, begin by stating the truth about your creation. Light and joy and peace abide in me. My sinlessness is guaranteed by God. Then put away your foolish self-images and spend the rest of the practice period in trying to experience what God has given you in place of what you have decreed for yourself. You are what God created or what you made. One self is true, the other is not there. Try to experience the unity of your one self. Try to appreciate its holiness and the love from which it was created. Try not to interfere with the self which God created as you by hiding its majesty behind tiny idols of evil and sinfulness you have made to replace it. Let it come into its own. Here you are, this is you, and light and joy and peace abide in you because this is so. You may not be willing or even able to use the first five minutes of each hour for these exercises. Try however to do so when you can. At least remember to repeat these thoughts each hour. Light and joy and peace abide in me. My sinlessness is guaranteed by God. Then try to devote at least a minute or so to closing your eyes and realizing that this is a statement of the truth about you. If a situation arises that seems to be disturbing, Quickly dispel the illusion of fear by repeating these thoughts again. Should you be tempted to become angry with someone, tell him silently, Light and joy and peace abide in you. Your sinlessness is guaranteed by God. You can do much for the world's salvation today. You can do much today to bring you closer to the part in salvation that God has assigned to you. And you can do much today to bring the conviction to your mind that the idea for today is true indeed. Light and joy and peace abide in me. Today we give way to the attraction of love for love. 
Our attack thoughts have never changed reality. Attack thoughts are unreal and only can seem to change awareness of reality. God's Son is as safe as His Father, for the Son knows His Father's protection and cannot fear. His Father's love holds Him in perfect peace, and needing nothing, He asks for nothing. So, what is perceived as the linear projected world was made visible and not true, and then what is true which is Spirit, became invisible to you. But the Holy Spirit still sees this Spirit with perfect clarity. God created Spirit perfect and nothing can change eternal love. Today we call upon the memory of God. We desire it, we want it, we call upon it. The Son of God cannot be content with anything but eternal love. It does not matter how much distance has been interposed between our awareness and truth. Truth remains true. Only the truth is true. And as a stepping stone to that eternal truth, we remember, the real world was given you by God in loving exchange for the world you made and the world you see. Today we would behold the real world. Today we let go of all thoughts of evil, darkness and sin. Today we let go of all fixed beliefs that would make separation seem real. We question the belief in separation from a very different reference point, with the Holy Spirit as our strength. We are overjoyed that all the evil that we thought we did was never done, that all of our sins are nothing, that I am as God created me, as pure and holy as God created me. That light and joy and peace abide in me, and that my sinlessness is guaranteed by God. Over and over today, this I will repeat, my sinlessness is guaranteed by God. I am as God created me. My sinlessness is guaranteed by God. Light and joy and peace abide in me. My sinlessness is guaranteed by God. Amen.